Look, maybe I should have expected it, but I really didn't. Uh, we had a brand new five minute deep dive into Echoes of Wisdom today. And this is like right before we're about to get a bunch of demo footage coming out of PAX, plus preview coverage next week. Nintendo just said, you know what? We're not going to make you wait. We want to give you the goods. And oh boy, did they deliver. We finally know what's inside the rifts. We have things like dungeons and boss fights confirmed, returning enemies, including one enemy that has been kicking my butt lately in Tears of the Kingdom, and so much more. Oh man, I'm so excited, guys. This is like my hype levels. You know, I, I, can we even put a hype meter down here? I don't even know. I don't even know how to edit that in. It doesn't really matter because here's the bottom line. I am hyped to the extreme for Echoes of Wisdom. Oh man, it is the most excited I have been since Tears of the Kingdom. And look, my hype for Tears of the Kingdom, you guys, if you follow my channel, know, is through the roof. Well, guess what? It's through the roof again. Echoes of Wisdom looks like one of the best Zelda games I've ever played. Oh, man, if you guys are excited like I am, get ready. We're going to play the entire video for you so you can hear the audio and all that other stuff. Then we're going to go through it a little slow after just pointing out some things. Oh, I'm so excited, guys. All you got to do, though, uh, if you want more Echoes of Wisdom coverage and just everything Nintendo, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. Drop a like if you see you like it. And you know what? Ah, I can't wait any longer. Let's go ahead and get right in. Here you guys go. Take a listen to this without my commentary. The land of Hyrule has been torn apart by mysterious rifts. In search of Link and the King of Hyrule, both of whom were stolen away, Princess Zelda must borrow the power of an ethereal creature called Tri. Together, they enter the tears that scar the land in order to save her kingdom. On her journey, Zelda will explore what lies within the rifts. This is the still world. Here, trees, fragments of land, people, and other items that were swallowed up by the rifts float in the void. It's said they will eventually vanish completely. Exploring the farthest reaches of this world is no easy feat. To do so, Zelda will have to traverse eerie, floating terrain. Because the path is broken up, the echoes you've learned can come in handy. Forge your own way forward by creating echoes to use as platforms to bridge the gaps. Massive dungeons can also be found deep within the still world. Zelda will use her wisdom and echoes to take on enemies and puzzles that stand in her way. Then confront challenging bosses who await her arrival. What to do though? Overwhelm the boss with echoes? Or combine them to find unique ways around the situation? The strategy is yours to devise. The still world can be accessed through rifts scattered across Hyrule and each entry point leads to a location with its own defining features. On her adventure, Zelda must overcome dungeons within the rifts and the mysteries they hold. Without Link or the King, Hyrule's fate rests squarely in Zelda's hands. When Zelda finds and picks up a mysterious sword, she takes on the sword fighter form, allowing her to attack directly. With its mighty power, she can forge ahead when her path is blocked, strike down enemies on her own, or battle alongside Echoes. 
However, she can only stay in sword fighter form for a short period of time. When or where you choose to wield this power is up to you. The sword's gauge can be replenished by collecting energy found in the still world, so be sure to grab any you find. This is Dompe, an engineer who crafts clockwork gizmos in Hyrule. His extravagant creations are called automatons, and they can be activated by winding them up. They can unleash powerful effects that differentiate them from echoes. But be careful, they'll break apart if they take too much damage. You'll meet many other quirky characters during your travels, and there's no doubt they'll be of great help to the princess. On a journey to traverse and save Hyrule, Princess Zelda's wisdom is key to undertaking this adventure. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, available September 26th only on the Nintendo Switch system. Pre-orders are available now on Nintendo eShop. All right, everyone. That's some pretty exciting stuff, right? Let's go ahead and go through this trailer slowly and just talk about the things I'm seeing and what excites me so damn much about it. Uh, let's just go all the way back to the beginning and hit play, and we'll just pause this as we go because I am just so stoked. First up, we have the beginning of the trailer where we see this thing, and uh, the king goes under and pushes Zelda away. So the rifts are doing its thing, and, you know, okay, we've kind of seen this cutscene before, so just a little bit more of an extended look at it in the moment. But, but things get really, really exciting very quickly. Uh, just, just look at this. Just wait for a second. Zelda, oh dude, do you see the expression on her face? So, even though like the eyes don't move as much in this art style, the expressionism in this game is just incredible. I really like the emotion being invoked by the characters. Uh, here it is talking, obviously, about the rifts that you're going to get to go inside. And look how big some of these, I mean, look how huge that is. Look how big that rift is. That rift is like taking over, what is that, like a fourth of the map or something? That is insane. It is so huge. Uh, but yeah, we've known for a bit they teased that you could use uh, your little buddy here and go inside the rift. So we already knew you could go inside. We just didn't know what it was. What's interesting, though, is what they're calling this world. That, to me, is fascinating because we've never had a world called this before. It's called the still world. And... I, I like it. it. It's actually much cooler than I actually thought it was going to be. I thought it might just be like a dark world kind of thing, but it's not that. It actually truly is its own little like universe of craziness going on. And this part here is, is, is fascinating. When people get pulled in the rifts, they kind of petrify and can't move anymore. It gives me a little bit of Twilight Princess vibes, but... There, you only had, like, their little spirits on the other side. You didn't have, like, the whole person, per se. Uh, here, the whole person is obviously here. And what's crazy is if you don't save them, I mean, read what happens here. And if they stay that way, they'll eventually fade away. So it gives you this, this like, drive to, man, I got to save Link. I got to save my father. I got to save the citizens of Hyrule that went into these rifts because if I don't, they're just not going to exist anymore. Very dark and ominous. And, like, even when you see them here, like, they're not moving. They're statues. You know, they're petrified. This is kind of dark for a Zelda game, but I like it. And they're doing it with a game of Star's Princess Zelda, which is awesome. Uh, I really like this this whole thing added to the still world. Here you're going to see some traversing. Obviously, this is the first confirmation we get that you can jump. Uh, we've been jumping on various objects, but you, sometimes you just think that's a run-up and an action button. This might be an automatic jump. Uh, notably here, you know, the UI didn't have any prompts pop up. So you either have a jump button or there's an automatic jump. This is notable because 
not all Zelda games you've been able to jump. I know this might seem taboo in the world of Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, but again, we have not had the ability to jump. We used to have to have like an item, like rocks, feather to do jumps. So here, Zelda can just jump, which I, I find that to be awesome. I also love how we're both getting some platforming action here, jumping on those sideways trees. Just a really clever... Uh, I just never thought we'd see anything like this in Zelda. This is literally platforming in Zelda in a way that I just did not expect. Uh, obviously here, I don't know what's down the ladder because they don't go down that ladder into the hole, but see them going over all the way across, you know, using beds and stuff to go get that chest, which again, we don't see what's inside it, but that's all right. Uh, this is cool because this is a dungeon, and it appears the dungeons, uh, based on what the guy said, all the dungeons are in the still world. So Southorn Runes, even though we saw it on the map, apparently the dungeon itself is inside of the still world and that's awesome it's just awesome to have dungeons confirmed to be back uh full dungeons you don't know how many of course i mean we can take a guess by looking at the map a bit on how many there'll be but it looks to be quite a few uh i want to go back a little bit that that enemy there i can't i'm not quite sure uh what enemy those knights are if those are our same enemies that we've had before because they look like a very new and unique design so correct me if i'm wrong i don't think we've had that exact enemy before uh although it could just be a redesign of a, of a current uh knight style enemy in zelda uh, that is entirely possible as well uh here we just see a puzzle one i love these side scrolling things obviously side scrolling originated back in zelda 2 but link's awakening had several segments like it as well and it's just nice to see them bring the side scrolling stuff back a little bit for some of these puzzle solving things i just really like this i know mario uh does this sometimes too uh, especially, you know, some of the 3D games that want to mix the gameplay up. I just think this is pretty cool. You know, light the torch, move on, kind of traverse through parts of the dungeon. I'm pretty cool with that. Now, this boss we had teased in a screenshot, so now we get to actually see the fight, and the fight is what you expect. Giant glowing purple ball, that's where you got to do the damage. And you see her just dropping various echoes to attack the boss. And I know some people were worried that, uh, you know, the whole echoes and fighting thing would get old. Yeah, well, Zelda gets to wield the sword later. So we got to talk about that when we get to that segment. Because uh, it also kind of confirms to me that the playable Link part is probably just the very beginning of the game. Because, you know, what does he provide? He provides a bow. He provides, you know, the sword. Well, Zelda's going to have her own ability to wield the sword. Probably her own ability to wield a bow at some point as well. Um, I like the variance in these environments too, that every rift is going to feel unique. That is cool. So like the rifts aren't going to feel the same. Because one of the things that was sort of a letdown in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom is how many times we would go into shrines and they would feel like pretty, like very samey at times, even if the puzzles were different. They just had the same aesthetic and everything. Well, here in the still world, while it's obviously a common aesthetic of the still world with the purple and all that, each, each one just looks different. Like here you got enemies kind of crawling on the ground, but then you're going to be, you're going to be like uh, going on the wall and having to navigate around them. Um, we have that, obviously that purple flying goop over here, whatever that ends up being. Uh, but then here's a, here's an environment too, where, Hey, we still have the same purple aesthetic, but now we got this water stuff going on because we're technically like, this is part of Hyrule. <laughs> like it's literally part of Hyrule, but it's turned on its side, which is just so cool looking. Um, and then you get to this next one here with the lava. Again, still, you have that common purple aesthetic theme, but because the elements that make up each rift are so unique, uh, it ends up just having a very good feel to it based on what we're seeing here. I'm very excited for the variants. I don't know why those lava things aren't moving. That's kind of fascinating. Uh, here you see you're just doing the cold classic, you know, block the stuff, uh, swim with the rock. Now, this is cool because this is probably a boss key, right? This is a really, really big chest. Uh, it's, this has got to be a boss key. I mean, straight up, uh, that's kind of cool. So that kind of confirms that we still have that, that element coming back where you might have small keys for some rooms and dungeons, boss keys. Are we going to have mini bosses or mini bosses back? Or is it just one big boss in each dungeon? You know, a lot of the top down games just go with the one big boss, but a lot of the 3d games obviously had mini bosses. So it'd be kind of cool to see how like traditional these dungeons are clearly puzzle solving and all that, even though this puzzle in particular Seems to be a pretty easy one, but I'm sure they get more difficult as the game goes on. This could be just from, like, the first dungeon you do. Um, she just echoed in a platform that moves, so that's a new echo ability we haven't seen. Uh, so that's good to see right there that, hey, there's even more and more echoes than what we're aware of. So I find that to be cool, and you got to time your jump just right, or you're going to fall into the abyss. Obviously, these are some of those uh, re-deads that happen to have the purple stuff on them. 
Uh, kind of like we saw in Tears of the Kingdom, to be completely honest. But uh, whatever. We don't really know uh, if there's an effect here. Like if they touch us, we can't get our heart back or whatever. So we'll see, we'll see how this works. Uh, but that's pretty cool. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that tornado thing that just shot out? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, that's one of the echoes. We saw a, a picture of that one time. But there's another echo. It costs two triangles. As you see up here, two triangles to fire off that echo. Um, and that echo is pretty cool. That's a really cool echo. I, I like that ability there. I also, for some reason, like the look of this like tree stump thing. I don't know. I just... Dude, the art style in this game is great, is basically what I'm saying. Uh, but here you see you're using uh, the fish with the, with the light on the end, using the keys here to guide on over. Uh, pretty standard stuff that I think most of us would figure out in a hurry with echoes. Uh, here we have a big bird. I mean, this, that almost looks like, we're, are we in another dungeon? Or is this just the Zora area? River Zoras? I don't know, man. Pretty cool stuff. Um, now, this is, the, this is what I'm talking about, where I don't think we need a uh, link... Like, the whole playable Link thing, I think, is really just very early in the game before he gets swallowed up by a rift. Because here we get one of Link's primary abilities, which is being able to use a sword. Also, what's fascinating about this is they limit the ability. So you can't just, like, stay in this form all the time. So it forces you to think. Uh, you have to gather resources to, to get the form back. I like that because it, 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 a lot of us, I think, if we just could access this anytime I want, our default would be in combat... Never use the echoes. Always just stick in sword fighter mode. And I, I do th like that the game will force us to be like, oh, you can't just stay in sword fighter mode all the time. Also, as you're going to see in a moment, it looks like sword fighter mode can be leveled up. And I don't know what the levels mean. Does it make you more powerful? Uh, does it allow you to stay in sword fighter phone even longer? I, I don't know. You obviously can use the sword here to cut down that purple stuff. Um, it's interesting, too, because it kind of turns you into like this ghost form super saiyan form of zelda or something it's pretty cool uh pretty interesting stuff you also see that she has the hylian shield we'll back that up a little bit so you can see that that is like the same shield that link uses you can see it right there you can see a good look at it right there that is the hylian shield as we all know and love so she just gets that in this form as well which is pretty cool so she could block attacks attack with the sword spin attack you know all the things we're used to doing with link uh, i don't know if she's got the ability to like you know fire lasers with her sword that might still stick as like a a link thing in some of the games. Anyways, uh, you're seeing just some combat here between the enemies where, you know, she brought out an echo and then she's going to switch into sword form and join the combat. So you can see how you can combine echoes and sword form together. Now, this is the thing I'm talking about where it's limited. So the more you're in sword form, this drains and it'll explain in a bit how you have to gather this material to, to, you know, refill that bar. It just doesn't refill automatically, but also level one. That's the thing that gets you. That to me means you can level up this sword ability. I don't know if it levels up by you discovering things in the world or if it levels up by just using it and gaining experience. We don't really know how the level up system works, but what we do know is that the level up system is clearly here. And I'm assuming it just lets you stay in the sword form even longer, or maybe it just makes the sword form more powerful. Uh, one thing I want to point out here once it gets away too, uh, and we have a better look at this is right here. Um, you see up here that we were wondering what the other abilities with the D-pad would be, because obviously we have our rod right here for the echo ability. Well, now we have sword up here. So it feels like there's going to be two more of these core abilities that you're going to be able to unlock. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them is a bow mode, so we get like the full abilities of Link back where we can shoot a bow and do the sword. But then if, the, if we presume one of these abilities is a bow, then what's the fourth ability? Like that's, that, that's the thing. Like, Okay, yeah, you could do the bow. I can see how that could be a thing where now you can shoot arrows, but what about the other one? So I'm very curious what they're going to fill these two out. Is one going to be a bow? And even if it is, what's that fourth one going to be? I like that Nintendo is not giving us all of that information right now. Uh, maybe we'll know it all by the time the game comes out, but I like that we don't know it now because it does leave some room for mystery and discovery. And this totally looks like one of those Boca Blink camps from, uh, <laughs> from Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's continue the, to play the trailer. She's gonna hop down here and and, and have her damn her, her good old time. Take them out in the sword mode as they were sitting there trying to eat some meat. So these are the energy that you collect to refill your sword gauge. Uh, seems to be all over the still world uh, and in dungeons and stuff. And it, you know, as you see it, it, you grab it. It fills it just a little bit there at a time. So that's pretty cool. And it goes over the inhabitants here. What I find interesting here is it goes over Dampe. If you guys remember Dante, he was uh, like the graveyard guy. <laughs> and now he's a mechanic. Uh, he's kind of like a Robbie-style character. Uh, pretty interesting to me, anyways, that that's what they turned him into. 
Uh, and he makes those these little robot things that you'll be able to use uh, temporarily. You know, watch. Oh, this one's cool. It goes down. It's like, huh? Huh? Boom. Big explosion. And I fly into the air. Uh, here's one that puts out music notes. Pretty cool. Uh, with the wolf running around. Uh, the choo-choo right there. I, I assume that's a choo-choo anyway. It's choo-choo jelly. Uh, then you have, oh, I missed. And, oh, no, I'm a scary thing. And, um, the guy's singing along here. He's sitting uh, right here. Hold on. Him, him right there, fun to snag and fun to bag. Gathering acorns is never a drag. This guy, the acorn guy, I don't know his name, but he's just sitting there having a grand old time. Uh, then we have this guy who is in a training facility, as we're going to find out. Oh, are you a new recruit, right? You see the sword back here. So this could be like a sword training exercise with your sword mode. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Maybe it's also a way to level up. Here we see that guy that they put in the official art, the expanded official art, uh, dropping in. This is probably some sort of mini game or something that we're able to do. Or maybe it's something else. Uh, you know, we don't actually know. We have a lot of speculation around it. But it's cool to see him up close here, uh, dropping in. Uh, here we are again in the Gerudo area. We don't 100% know the name of these characters. There's, there's guesses, but we don't know yet. Uh, but it looks just really cool. Uh, we have confirmation there's fireworks in the game. The Gorons are involved in firework making or something. Hopefully we get to launch some fireworks. That'll be kind of cool. They're bursting with color, spirit, and craftsmanship. I just so much personality. Here, here's Zelda with the cat. Um, doesn't show us petting the cat. This is presumably a great fairy fountain, right? Um, uh, I love the design of the great fairies in this game. It really does I mean, just look at her. It really does fit like the overall aesthetic of the game, the great fairy. So I, I really do like the fact they brought great fairy fountains back, which again, might be how we upgrade the sword ability or some of our other abilities. Maybe it's how we upgrade our rod ability. Um, I don't know. So, uh, here we're just going to see like a montage of, of her doing so, the purple stuff hits Zelda and splits off into enemies. So that must be what, when we saw the purple blob fly across the screen earlier. It must have been um, creating uh, enemies if it if it touches you. Uh, so that's that's pretty interesting how that works. Here we see some combat in Hyrule Castle Town. Um, looks like mostly Moblin or oh, and those new knight guys we saw earlier. Uh, at least I think they're new enemies. They might not be. Again, they could be re uh, remakes of or reimagining of other Zelda enemies we've had. Because most of the game's been enemies we've had in Zelda before. Um, yeah, this just looks great. Look at this platforming. Uh, uh, there's there's you flying with one of the, the Cocos or Cucos or Cuckos. I don't I can never pronounce these. The chickens. Uh, here, here she is doing the whole hiding in the, hiding in the vase thing. And like, what? The Moblin's like, huh? what the hell's going on? Uh, and for some reason, this, this blob or whatever just gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you're walking by a frog because of the rain probably. This in the rain's making it bigger. Uh, there is a little fairy. So I'm thinking for the fairy fountains, you know, when you see this, that I'm thinking we this is like a Majora's Mask style thing where we have to gather up the fairies for the fairy fountain. Also, maybe this is just a capturable fairy. Also, I was totally wrong. Look at this. That that ability to on the left side, that's the mechanical ability. So Dompe, look at that. So it has nothing to do with like wow. Okay, maybe there is no bow ability. Maybe you have rod, sword, you have the Dompe robot ability, so you can just pull out those robots when you need them. And then what's the fourth ability? What's the fourth ability? Holy crap. I'm actually kind of shocked. That's one of the abilities. Okay. Um, but yeah, or maybe this is a fairy you can capture and heal yourself with. I have no idea, right? Because um, we see that she captures it in a bottle. That's why I'm like, oh, she puts it in a bottle. Maybe that's to heal yourself with. Or maybe it's to bring it back to the fountain. You know, we don't know. Here you can see that she has the echo ability for a crab. Um, and here she is doing some horse mini games. You see she's trying to, you know, jump over these boxes and crates and get to the flag, uh, which she's about to do. So there's a horse racing mini game. Obviously, follow the arrows. Uh, this is... You guys know who this is, right? Guys, she's back. She's back. She's back, everyone. Ocarina of Time, be still my heart. Be still, my heart, Volvagia has returned. Oh, man, if this isn't Volvagia, then I don't know who the hell it is. Oh, my God, this is awesome. This is so exciting. You see some gust airs. You see some, a trampoline she set up. Uh, obviously, this thing hanging off the neck might be like a weak point. I don't know. Or, or like a thing we can attach to. Oh, man, Volvagia is back. Ah! One of my favorite boss fights from Ocarina Time. This is awesome. Um, and then... And then we get this little this bonus ending scene coming up. 
that uh, <laughs> it's kind of ironic because we've seen Zelda in this role before, uh, basically being a puppet. Like, oh, I found Link. Hey, everyone, I found Link. This is so cool. Except he turns around and he's possessed. Um, might even be a shadow puppet. We've seen this happen to Zelda so many times, right? It's happened in like Twilight Princess. It recently happened in Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, although that wasn't actually Zelda, it was a puppet version. Uh, we've seen this with Zelda several times. So it is kind of ironic and funny to watch Link be the one, whether this is a possessed Link or a shadow or a puppet. I don't know, but it is cool. Like he's coming in to do the big down, down sword swipe on top of Zelda. Um, just, just a really, really cool uh, thing they're doing here. Dude, Echoes of Wisdom, I don't know I don't know how much more good things I can say about this game. And the crazy thing is, we're like hours away from having brand new footage at the internet from the demo, impressions coming next week. Dude, Echoes of Wisdom looks every bit as amazing as I did not expect it to be. I'm going to be honest, top-down Zelda games are really, really great, and I get really excited for them, but I didn't think Nintendo had this up their sleeves. This, to me, is one of the most incredibly inventive, creative, and exciting Zelda games they have made in a long time. And that's saying something with Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom out there. So, man, oh, man, oh, man. Let's go, baby. I'm so excited for this game. If you guys are excited, too, be sure to drop a like down below. Whew, let's try to crush it to 1,000 likes. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. Catch you in our next video, because you know we have more Echoes of Wisdom coverage coming over the next week.